If their hip is numb, they may bang on it with their, with their fist. And, you know, what we see in that is we see the nervous system tells you what kind of rehabilitation it wants or it desires. So if we're talking about a, a child on the autism spectrum, uh, you know, some of them hit their head against the wall. Why do they do that? In my opinion, it's because they lose the sensation on their face or on their head. And for an example, if, if you've gone to the dentist and you've had Novocaine, um, you know, what do you do? You start smacking your face. You start tapping your cheek, pinching it, biting it, because, you know, one, you want to see what what that feels like. And you could, you could feel it, you could sense it, but it's not the same. And I feel that a similar thing happens in these spectrum kids that, you know, they start banging their head against the wall because they've lost the sensation or the awareness of their head. Um, there's other things that they may do. They may slam the door because their nervous system is requesting uh, rehabilitation through their hearing. Uh, they may, you know, flap their hands. And I feel that this is a proprioceptive uh, request. And the list goes on and on from there, but to get that concept across. Now, with somebody with MS, their nervous system is shutting down in very key areas. So uh, whenever dealing with somebody who is more significantly damaged than the neurotypical patients that walk through the door, MS, brain injury, stroke, and the like, my, my focus begins at the cranial nerve. Okay, I want to try to strengthen everything up, but... You know, there's there's a certain point when somebody is neurologically damaged, you want to start at their cranial nerves. And the reason is because the cranial nerves bring quality of life, your ability to connect to your environment. So even if somebody's in a wheelchair and they haven't used their body, you, you want to begin at the cranial nerves because that's going to amplify their quality of life first. And when you do that, when you strengthen the nervous system, it becomes effortless to do the functions that are rehabilitated. And I'm going to say that again. When you strengthen the nervous system, it becomes effortless to use the functions that have been rehabilitated. And with that in mind, we have the uh, the ability to use that released energy, the, the, the energy that is no longer being uh, demanded by these functions, and use that towards nervous system healing elsewhere. So by doing that, by clearing out all these other areas of the nervous system that she, this patient does have function on, uh, we are able to have the nervous system focus its energy on healing the areas that are damaged uh, or that are not working properly. So uh, in terms of going to more advanced work, Module 3 is where we teach visceral rehabilitation. And you may have heard me talk about C7 being connected to the thyroid and the lung. And these are neurological connections that we found through this work. And there, there are advanced associations there. I would not say that she needs to wait until the Module 3 event to help this person. I feel that the, the, the work that she's learned thus far is, is significant for helping the patient in, its tra in their tra trajectory of getting well. When newer students are challenged with advanced cases, I will often say, you know, co-treat the patient with somebody who's already a quantum neurologist, somebody who's gone through the full amount of training. Um, let's say in this case, uh, Dr. PJ could find her nearest practitioner that's a quantum neurologist. Uh, you know, she could do the workups with, that she does with the patient and be the, the main practitioner, and then once a month or so could send that patient to the quantum neurologist and have the advanced work done. So that would be my suggestion uh, to, to Dr. PJ. And thank you for that question. Let's see. Um, I have a question here. It says, your website states, along with the shoulder video, very impactful results with the shoulder, cervical, and thoracic areas. Could you please tell me some more about how these results compare with the results one could expect from the low back protocols the DVD training. Also, how does this compare with manual adjusting results? Uh, and that's from uh, Dr. David Hager. And thank you for that question, doctor. So the, 
the biomechanic work of the body, that's, uh, he's referring to the biomechanic corrections that I teach, and that's, uh, you know, as chiropractors, we've all learned how to adjust. So I don't teach adjusting courses I, uh, because, you know, everybody knows how to do that already, at least the chiropractors do. What I focus on is, is teaching the biomechanical manipulations that, that I've developed um, I, I do that through a combination of manual corrections as well as instrument corrections. Uh, the concepts I've developed are based on, uh, you know, life experience and martial arts training. And in martial arts training, you learn how to leverage the person's body against themselves. And, of course, in quantum neurology, we're not focusing on hurting people. We're focusing on healing them. So, but with the same understanding of how to leverage the body, I've developed systematic ways of recovery of, of joints and of, of certain parts of the body. And we have uh, several DVD titles on this, uh, one for the neck and, and thoracics. We have one on the shoulder. We have a different DVD on the elbow and wrist, another one on the low back and hip, and we also have the knee and ankle and then the foot. And we also recently released the advanced hip video as well. So all these DVDs are using the Arthurstrom instrument. I use the Arthurstrom instrument um, for those people that are not fans of instrument adjusting. Uh, the Arthurstrom instrument is a great tool because we are able to uh, do things that we cannot do with our hands. As chiropractors, we, we are famous for adjusting with our hands, and I'm very good at that. And even though I'm good at that, there's things that I could do with an instrument, such as the Arthur Stim, that I cannot do with my hands. I cannot adjust somebody throughout their range of motion. And that's one of the key aspects I use the Arthur Stim in, is to recovering uh, corrections through the range of motion. And that's one of the keys that we do. If you've seen the video on, on our website for the, the shoulder rehabilitation, Oftentimes, uh, and that's, that's a consistent result. I'm, I'm confident in saying that. You know, I won't say it's 100%, uh, but we get consistent results with that protocol. And some of our doctors have said that it's a license to print money because it simply shows you how to open up somebody's shoulder very quickly in, in seconds. Within 30 seconds to a minute, you could have uh, a full function restored in a shoulder and even people who've had problems 10, 20, 30, 40 years can be recovered very quickly. Uh, the same goes with all the DVD training that I have. You know, it's the same concept. It's unlocking the body's natural movement and leveraging that movement towards its rehabilitation. Now, um, I have a, a, a good friend on the line. Before I take any more questions here, I'd like to... Uh, speak with Dr. Woody Beck. Now, let me see. Woody, are you there? Yes, sir. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, uh, this George. is not planned, so you know, I'm putting you on the spot here, and I appreciate you being on the call. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. You know, uh, Dr. Beck, it's kind of funny because everything I've been talking about, Dr. Beck has a lot of experience with. Uh, he's helped patients get out of wheelchairs. He's helped people that have had shoulder damage for 70 years, recover their shoulders. Uh, he was with me in Louisiana when we watched uh, Roger Sims walk uh, 